Hello everybody, welcome back to uh, Dominions 5. We're playing as Late Age Man. This is the round one of the tournament. We're at war with Satis. And uh, let's see how this goes. So, uh, more assassination attempts. Uh, we were able to fight back successfully. I don't know how. I don't know why he doesn't cast Swarm. That is weird. He must have been not scripted properly. Uh, but most of the other... Oh, well, the Warden... <laughs> yes, the Warden does fine. Uh, because... This guy's like, oh yeah, a swarm. And then this guy's like, well, I've got a shotgun. So... Uh, we lose a Magister here, which is really unfortunate. Um, we have a lot of commanders, so the odds of them attacking any one of our valuable mages is pretty low. But of all Magisters, this happened to be a one with a bunch of items on it, with a uh, storm in a bottle, and we're really short on air gems, so this really sucks. Okay, then there's a battle. Alright, so if this looks familiar... Uh, it should be. Uh, you can see our formation now looks a little different. We've spread everybody out as best we can. We still got our kind of mage core in the back. He's got archers in the back. He's got the same thing as before, basically. Um, he's got a uh, long dead chaff in front. He's got some of his uh, horsemen on the side, probably going to flank. Let's see. Uh, we have put up Storm. Alright, so let, let's pay attention. So these these uh, black effects are Shadow Blast, and then the green effects are uh, Banefire. So one Banefire hit here. That one happens to hit this guy. They hit a square here. Now we've got Storm up, by the way. So, uh, if we look here, our precision... Uh, oh, there, and there's also darkness going up. So, even with uh, all the... Even with all the debuffs going up with storm and darkness, we still have 8 precision. And I don't know if wind guide has gone off. I think it has. Um, so, we're still doing fine in the precision department. If we look at... Uh, uh, these regular troops, they've only got 5 precision, so that's uh, an issue. But when you're fighting against a densely packed swarm of dudes like that, low precision doesn't matter so much. Um, we've got flaming arrows up, yeah. Um, you'll notice that the shotgun blast, the bows of war, are going in all directions now, because I've got a few on fire rear, but I think most of them are just on fire, whatever. Um, and so uh, these uh, horsemen have run into, you know, the part of my formation that was out here, have been successfully deflected. Uh, and now, after my buffing script, the rest of my communion is starting to uh, just do evocation spells. Uh, which include Thunder Strikes, Lightning, Gifts from Heaven. Um, a few of my guys, uh, the squads here, I still seem to have them just on hold and fire. Um, or it looks like here on top I have them on hold and attack, actually. Um, now you see that a lot of the uh, Wardens are switching to just banish spam uh, because they were detecting a lot of undead. Uh, and because we have divine channeling, it's sort of a level two. Uh, so uh, Wind of Memories, because I have an air dominant bless, uh, is a pretty high AOE banish. So it's actually very good at killing uh, swarms of undead. And then my guys are just gonna chase the rest of the guys off the map. And that is that. So uh, the battle this time uh, went much better. Um, I mean, we still took casualties. 
We lost about half the Wardens, but far fewer defenders, fewer Wardens. So we are taking casualties. We're a human nation. That's sort of inevitable. Um, but I think we've basically reduced the proportion of casualties that we took by half. And also, our we didn't have as overwhelming numbers as we did last time. So I think this was a much uh, a significant improvement, I would say, over the last time. Um, yeah. Uh, then there's a battle inside the fortress, which obviously we take because there's nothing left. Uh, what else happens here? We fight some... Oh, we actually actually do bump into this army, so that's good for us. He had he was bringing some reinforcements, I think, to his capital. He had a bunch of city guards, which are pretty average medium infantry with a mage leading them. So there are more dudes here, but our dudes are basically higher quality. Uh, you see, we've we've pegged all the commanders, so they're going to die of decay no matter what happens if we don't just outright kill them. Um, yeah, they, uh, the combination of the evocations of the uh, of the bows of war with flaming arrows uh, are more than enough to cause a city route. So we actually kill a hundred units here. Or, well, we killed 60 of them, but that was a, a significant army. So we had 30 units versus 100, plus the PD versus almost 150 units. And we took four casualties only. So very successful there. Um, now, his army that was in the west here, this army, remember, he had attacked my fort, then moved back here. Now he has moved back onto this fort. So he's trying to kind of distract me here and maneuver around. So we're going to do what we can to try to to try to um, to try to eliminate them. Um, I'm bringing a you know a small. I don't need a huge army to take this out. This is mostly skeletons. Uh, but we've got enough. We've got a small. It's not even a communion. We're just doing wind guide. Um, meanwhile, we're taking. Excuse me. Most of our army east. We don't have a lot of dudes left because we've been taking pretty severe casualties, but it's enough to to take on these random small armies. Also, Satis unfortunately has had a very bad luck event and has a bunch of demon knights on his cap, so he's basically locked down. Uh, so the war is essentially over, but we still have a lot of mop-up to do. Now we're going to move on top of this fort here, which has more city guards, but again, we cleared an army of 100 city guards last turn, so I'm quite confident in this army's ability to take them on and that is that um, uh, let's see if there's anything else going on this turn uh, enchantment I don't know why I decided to grab thaumaturgy 3 all of a sudden for teleport what did I want to teleport? Hmm. Oh, well, uh, our god appeared. I must have missed telling you guys that. Um, oh, no, it appeared this turn. So my god appeared this turn, and I guess I wanted to... I'm going to maybe move him here to do some forging, but maybe I was thinking about doing some site searching... So I wanted to be able to move the god around, but I can win. I can cloud trapeze him, but I guess I have so little air gems that I thought I should probably get astral for teleport. I'm honestly not 100% sure what I was thinking. Anyways, uh, losing a bunch of troops means that our upkeep costs have gone down, so we can afford to recruit some mages again, which is nice. Um, and that's that. Let's let's keep going through these turns. That was turn 34. Let's go to turn 35. Okay, um, ah, so this army that he's been using to distract me is now making a beeline for my capital, uh, and this was a small squad of reinforcements, so I only had a few wardens, uh, and unfortunately they get overrun, so that is quite annoying. Um, Alm takes the throne and then is uh, bumped 
by Atlantis. So let's let's watch this just for fun. Um, there's actually a bit of a kind of diplo and politics going on here, so I'll fill you in on that in the meantime. So this is a big throne with a <laughs> with a great mother with a ton of gems, uh, and Alm has got a ton of dudes with morning stars. And then he's got a bunch of crossbowmen and then a whole bunch of dudes doing evocations. So let's watch that. Yeah, these are like the iron darts plus the crossbows. Uh, gifts from heaven. Yeah, just a lot of evocations. An excellent uh, choice, an excellent tool to deal with this kind of indie army composition. Um, and the wolves especially are great to send in front to die, but also to pin down the enemy as your big AOE vacations like Gifts from Heaven uh, hit. And then he doesn't even def he doesn't need ugh, he doesn't even need to fight the Great Mother. She just routes uh, from the HP loss. So very well executed by Alm. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't talk to Atlantis, who thought I'm going to go get this throne. Um, now Atlantis didn't have as big an army. Uh, I think he is planning to do... Oh, obviously he's doing Stygian Reigns. Uh, what else is he doing here? I'm just... I'll, I'll rewatch the battle in a, in a moment. I just want to know what this mage is going to do. Darkness. Okay, I thought maybe Rigor Mortis. Okay, let's watch the full battle. Uh, these guys already have 22 protection. Uh, with uh, Stygian Reigns up, uh, they have uh, 28 protection versus mundane attacks, but all of Ulm's stuff is, is mundane attacks. Well, at least his units and his crossbows are mundane attacks. Unfortunately, the army from Ulm is actually... Uh, like, these are very high-quality units. But uh, the Elm units are not bad. Uh, and, you know, like crossbows... Look, a crossbow's armor is armor piercing, right? So it's doing 11 armor piercing. Now, it's armor piercing plus it's piercing damage. So only 40% of the protection applies. So sure, these guys have 28 protection. But in actual fact, only like 13, 12, 13 of that protection is applying if they get hit by a crossbow bolt. So you're going to take chip damage, right? 11 versus 12, 13 on the RNG table, you're going to take some chip damage for sure. Um, plus, Gifts from Heaven just kind of obliterates you. Now, of course, he takes a lot of friendly fire from that. Um, but uh, just taking, just causing a few casualties is enough to cause an HP load here, unfortunately, for Satis. Um... But, you know, relying on Gifts from Heaven does mean that you take a lot of friendly fire, so he does lose 52 of his 72 infantries of Alm. Um, let me go through the rest of our battles here. Uh, this was mostly PD. Nothing here. Okay, uh, let me wrap up uh, what's going on. Let me talk about what's going on uh, in Satis, and then I'll talk about Atlantis and, and stuff like that. Uh, so... We are going to try to take this province again. This time we've bought, we've brought a much more significant <laughs> army. So hopefully we don't die to the PD this time. Um, we have, we are starting to siege down this fort, but I decided, you know, why don't I just go grab this province real quick and then turn around. Um, here I cleared it off. I cleared it. All right, so not I cleared it. So Satis had it moved over this fort. I broke siege and retook control of it, but then I got a random bad event from the Gaia throne. So we got an Earth Dome, so we gotta kill it. Fortunately, these guys are stealthy, so they can sneak attack out. So I've got an army heading here to wipe out this uh, this roving band of undead. Um, it is mostly wardens with bows of war, which should do fine. Um, but I've also got a bunch of guys here patrolling well a bunch it's not much but i've got the pd from the capital so the combination of the capital pd plus um this which is uh a few wardens and then a wind guide communion here uh, plus the pd which is you know not great but it's got some crossbowmen some longbowmen 
should be enough. So either I, I have the fight here or we or he attacks the capital and we have the fight there. Either way, I think we'll win. Um, so that's what's going on on the Satis front. Uh, and research-wise, anything special going on? No. Um, we're uh, working on our path boosters with our mage. We're working down the astral uh, line because I want to get a ring of wizardry done to boost my elemental paths. Um, notice uh, because we have a, a this site, it this uh, like a, a hammer reduces the cost by a flat two, but construction bonus twenty percent is really good for very expensive items. So this ring of sorcery is normally cost 60 but it, we actually have a 20 percent discount on that which is significant so that means it costs 12 fewer a fifth right yeah 12 12 fewer astral gems uh in addition to whatever discount we get from the hammer so another two um below that um so at this point in the game um patala has basically eaten agartha and people are concerned that Patala is running away with the game. Um, Patala seems to have had a very strong early game with their Awake Expander. And importantly, Satis didn't really successfully push east, expand east. So Patala was able to secure these two thrones. Actually, the same could be said for Midgard. Midgard kind of got attacked by a lot of people. So it's not so much his fault, but Patala has been able to secure the two thrones to his west. Uh, Patala is here, right? So he was east of, of his. He was able to secure these two thrones, which theoretically could have been contested by either Satis or Midgard, or of course Agartha. Now Patala completely demolished Agartha, um, but because of the wars they were involved in, Satis and Midgard weren't able to really contest these two thrones from Patala. Then Patala went east and has taken this throne. Um, and now, fortunately for now, Alm has secured this throne. But, um, you know, this was territory that Agartha had claimed. And so now there's a real concern that he could just kind of move in here and just then he'd be at four thrones. He would only need one extra throne to win. So there's been talk about a coalition forming against Patala. Uh, and in particular, um, Alm and Atlantis, uh, well, I'll, I'll, let me, I guess I should leave it at that because I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I'm recalling events from the past here. But um, people are starting to worry about Patala. Let's, let's leave it at that for now. Um, now, you know, in terms of the, the state of the game right now, we're kind of doing okay. Um, fortunately, you need five thrones to win the game, to end the game. Uh, and even if Batala, let's say, was able to rush onto this throne, he would still need another. Uh, and Atlantis's thrones are well defended. My throne is well defended. There's a throne here, which is still vulnerable. But this is a pretty nasty army. He Patala could, you know, do gateway and kind of teleport thugs here but they'd have to be really decked out to successfully pull this off also the range yeah he could do it from from there so this is a weakness so we do need to be thinking about taking this throne soon now this is not yet a worry in the sense that he wouldn't do a magic phase attack on this throne until he had this one secured but if we do see that patala declares war on alm and starts to take this land then we need to be worried about the game ending instantly. And the reason is, so the win condition for this is the first and second place advance. So it's not so much I'm worried about Patala winning, it's that I have to be second if he does. And right now, and the win conditions, by the way, is number of thrones. And if it's tied, then it's uh, number of provinces. So if Patala ends the game by teleporting here, Atlantis is second, and that is not good. Um, so we... That we do have to be concerned about that. Now, it's not an emergency yet, but that means that our plan is going to be try to wrap Satis up and then try to go secure this throne and keep monitoring the situation uh, out here. Uh, let's, uh, let's load up another turn. That was turn 35. Let's load up turn 30. Uh, that was turn 35, I just said. So let's load up turn 36. 
Um, okay, assassination attempts. Our Magister Arcanes do well for themselves. I'm just going to go right through these. We're fighting PD. Uh, I don't know what that was. Barbarian Chiefs. Oh, okay, so he does attack me on he does attack on them well we knew who's going to do that we just didn't know where we were going to have the fight so this is my province pd with a handful of wardens with bows of war and a small communion in the back um which is enough to do the job uh because this is troops kind of suck and longbowmen not even longbowmen, these are shortbowmen. Oh, okay. For shame, he got beaten by shortbowmen in melee. Uh, no, but seriously, we actually have defenders here, and we've got some wardens, and so... Uh, and we've got a little communion in the back. Uh, that's doing just fine. Do we ever actually kill this mage? Oh, he decides to run away. Oh, wow. The armies of mana routed. But the army of Satis routes first. So we win. Anyways, we win, guys. Uh, this is the... Uh, this is the province that we had failed to capture last time. This time we brought a lot more dudes... Uh, he still has all that PD, but this time, this uh, big blob of heavy infantry is more than enough to deal with the blob of militia or light infantry, which is doesn't quite compare. So, success. Uh, we are... This is just like we're taking land around Satis itself. There are some mages here for some reason. Um... Oh, yeah, and then this this happens. So uh, Midgard decided he was going to take this uh, province back. Uh, unfortunately for him, I had moved in with my little sieging army. Uh, this is actually a scary army because of the bows of war and, and it's a little flaming arrows communion. So even though these are pretty nasty Einhars, uh, we actually just uh, kill the commander with fire rear. And so uh, these guys hadn't yet berserked, so they just uh, flee. And yeah. Uh, so we kill his dudes. Uh, we take a few casualties, but we still have an army. Unexpected events, magic, province income, whatever, curses. Okay. Um, so I talk with uh, Midgard, and we... I kind of decide it's okay he can have this province, so I leave zero PD in it and move back on top here to siege this down. Now, I have taken... This is the army... This is like the mage corps and the commander corps with a few veterans left over from the battle in Gulf Alas. They kind of went around this way. They're going to go down here and join this army here to siege down this fort. Um... I, so this is still locked down by these demon knights, so I don't really need to worry about sieging it down soon. I just want to kind of mop this stuff up. But I want to have a strong presence here to, because to me this is important. It puts me in proximity of Patala's throne here, so I could intervene in case we had to delay, you know, Patala winning the game. Um, we, uh, oh... The mage fight earlier that I mentioned to that I mentioned must have been the retreating Sorum uh, Satis's retreating mages from this fight ended up here, and then we killed them with this army. So we're gonna take we're gonna try to mop this up as best we can. We're gonna clean this up with some dudes. We're putting together a small army here to eventually clean up this militia force. Pretty random, but hey, that's what he had, so that's what he's using. Um, and we're just going to prioritize uh, sieging down this fort. Um, we are now going up to Alteration 7, so we can do Fog Warriors and Mass Protection. Uh, and uh, that is our current priority. Uh, we've been spending all our Fire Gems uh, on Lightless Lanterns, so our research is now up to about 1,000 per turn. You can see that a lot of our mages now are equipped with Lightless Lanterns. 
Um, we are also recruiting uh, shamblers because we happen to have shamblers in this province. Uh, and we're going to use those to go take these underwater provinces because nobody's taking them. And that's income that we could be getting uh, that we haven't gotten yet. So that is what is going on. I think we'll end the episode here and I will resume in the next one. See you guys soon. Take care.